Um, let's start in saddle pose. Oh. oh, is that okay to start there for you? Yes, so saddle pose, sitting on your heels, or you can also sit in between your heels um, in the traditional hero's pose. And especially first thing in the morning, I find my body is a little stiff from lying still in bed all night. So I might take, you know, 10 breaths before I put my elbows down or 10 breaths with my elbows down before I put my shoulders down. So just feel what makes sense for you in this pose. Maybe close your eyes for a moment and just allow your attention to kind of gather up what you need, where you are. Noticing if you have, um, you know, something you're really um, contemplating or obsessing about or fixated on that instead of pushing it away from your practice, just picture pulling it just a little closer, maybe pulling it a little bit below your thinking brain place to more your feeling place. But we want to include our complexity and our wholeness in our practice. Infinite stars, infinite space, source of the knowledge of the worlds, giver of thoughts that empower creation, transforming light into the elements of matter, radiate before my mind, the seven keys that unlock the doors of the mystery temple, that I may enter and fulfill the purpose for which my birth initiates. So invocation is written down by Orlin Bishop. But it's not unique to him or one people or one place that we call on the invisible to be with us, remind us, and to remind us to work with the invisible when we come into our day and into our practice. Notice if you have any dreams lingering in your awareness or your feelingness. And then take a couple of breaths and notice how your thinking has started off this morning. You could say even that we have a mood in our thinking. Noting, noticing what's alive in your feeling life. And start to notice what's energetically already awake in your body. Starting to notice the sensations in your body.
Before we come out of the yoga pose, take a couple of breaths and maybe think about how you want to direct your practice today, this morning, or dedicate your class to someone. And or. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing about our dedications. We lose nothing. And then either start to come up one elbow at a time, or you can even roll to your side. And however you get there, we're going to meet up lying on our belly. You can moan and groan. Trying to sleep in the poses also is an admirable effort. And when, when we're going to come into um, sleeping lizard for a moment, because this is my favorite recovery pose, so you're going to bend your right elbow and bend your right knee with your gaze going to the right. You want to really feel this uh, sensation of the floor supporting you. We have the new moon in Aquarius right now. And this calls in our being to the places where we're most uniquely ourselves, our eccentricities. Another amazing thing that's happening this week is that now uh, Venus is already stationed and is going direct and Mercury also joins the crowd and goes direct. And then for the first time in a long time, we have all the planets kind of moving in um, well, I was going to say the right direction, but the planets don't actually do anything wrong for us. But our experience of the planets is, is they're all moving in the right direction now. So this new moon in Aquarius is calling in us to like, all right, get up and go. It's time. Now with your next inhale, lift up your head, turn your head and switch your limbs. So you're gonna bend your left elbow and your left knee. You know, it's so quick, the movement of the moon. New moon to full moon is half a month, two weeks, and then back again. So this rhythm is much faster than the sun's rhythm through the seasons. And way faster than in any of the other planets changing direction or how fast they move around the sun. So it's no surprise that classically our moon is connected, our moon, the moon, both moons are connected to our feeling life. 
or life of emotions that can be even quicker to change than the moon itself. But just to get like that taste, like the moon moves through the different signs of the zodiac, about two days a sign. With your next inhale, lift up into Sphinx. So there's this old ancient saying, it's a wise man who listens to the stars, but a fool that is ruled by them. So when we hear these kind of ideas, we wanna, we wanna feel into it more than analyze it. To notice, okay, what is <laughs> moony about me? Or what, what do I share as similarities? And the moon may move so quickly through the different signs, but how are my moods? Do they change so much? What kind of movement do I have in my feeling life? And how much am I capable of sensing where my um, changes are, uh, are motivated from? You know, for instance, how much does Venus being retrograde, how much do I actually notice in myself? And most likely, if you're anything like me, especially at first, there'll be very little. But this practice of taking different perspectives through which to view ourselves with is part of the practice of self-knowledge, the practice even of self-realization. Human beings used to be way more connected to the planets, so it's told by mystics and seers, that it was even such that very similar to animals, we'd procreate at certain times and most of the babies would be born in the spring. We're very far away from that rhythm. And this move has not been purely out of um, a disdain for nature or for the planets or the invisible, but it is really the separation is actually towards human beings liberation so that we can come to discover these hidden truths inside of us and out in the world, not out of a compulsion, but out of our own freedom and initiative. For instance, it used to be obvious to the human being that we were composed of a body, soul, and spirit. But that kind of no brainer feeling around it, the obviousness of it disappeared around the late 1800s for various esoteric reasons. It 
leaving us now with one kind of, everyone can really agree we have a physical body. Some people totally deny the presence of a soul. Many do not. But fewer people recognize the belonging of spirit in our human trinity. Start to lower yourself down to the yoga mat. You're welcome to wiggle your hips side to side or even bend your knees and sashay your legs side to side. The movement, the yang kind of movement, dynamic, fast, is that balances out the sensitivity that the yin has lifted to our surface. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, push your hips back to your heels. And we're gonna do a wide knee child's pose. So maybe you need extra padding underneath your knees, maybe not. Maybe you wanna use a bolster underneath your chest or a nice rolled up blanket that can be very kind of soothing. So you feel an incredible stretch in the groins area, your hips coming back towards your heels, your arms stretching forward. So as we contemplate these mysteries, you know, how is it that we've lost our um, obvious and uh, collective experience of spirit. Doesn't it sound very similar to how we've kind of lost this obvious connection to source as well? You know, whether we read um, in, you know, the Old Testament or other ancient texts, like, you know, God spoke to people Okay, albeit sometimes he spoke through a bush or weird fire eruptions, but it wasn't, it wasn't a silent, invisible realm of just trust and faith that it has become now. And so this picture is that so when something is hidden, so we don't take it as a given, then it is available to the human being to discover out of the freedom of their being rather than the compulsion. And by reaffirming these truths in our personal practice and our personal experience and our personal kind of faith we could discover a capacity in ourselves to engage the invisible in our own activities and maybe, maybe even inspire other people to look, to find. You know, as we're born into this world, we're born into a family, we're born into a people, we're born into communities. And sometimes that doesn't change throughout your life. You know, you grew up in the same town you live in. But for others, everything about that has changed moved to different places, discovered new communities. And even so often we have 
this amazing phenomena of actually meeting people that are so dear to us, so unexplainably explainably connected to us that we'll talk about they are our family, they're our chosen family. And while that does not take away from the family connections that it, we're tied to through blood, we notice there is something precious and remarkable about these people we feel so inexplicably close to that we call them family without our blood connection. Chosen out of freedom. Take three more full deep breaths here. And then after your third breath, you're gonna slide your knees together and take your arms back behind you. You can grunt and groan and moan and make noises. And then we're gonna practice one last yin pose before we do a kind of a gentle vinyasa. So roll up, cross your ankles, stretch your legs out in front of you. We are going to banana asana. So stretch your body long on the mat. Take your left heel to your left corner of your yoga mat. Stretch your arms up over your head. And so you're going to either bring your right foot next to your left foot, or you can actually hook your heel over your ankle. And then you stretch your arms over your head and you're pulling your right arm to the left. You might even be able to slide your hips more to the right or shift your shoulders more over. It takes a couple of adjustments to find your banana. And then see that you can soften into the shape. Maybe these past two years has been a time for you that you really um, witnessed in yourself and even people that you know, what a huge difference a practice of any kind can have. That this time that we've devoted on the yoga mat or sitting in meditation, or even for some people, how they run or dance or, but this personal practice idea You may have noticed in yourself, or maybe you noticed in your friends, that it gifts a certain ground. So when the whole world is shaking and, and things are happening in ways that we never imagined, it seems that those with a personal practice didn't lose themselves as much in the catastrophes and the mismanagement of so many things. And while this is an extreme case on this same kind of way on a daily basis, our practice very slowly, very subtly builds up something steady in us dependable, unshakable, helping us work on our soul tenacity. To ever be more ourselves.
And then start to wiggle your banana straight. And we're gonna open up the other side body with the second half of banana asana. Take your right heel to the right, either bringing your left foot next to your right foot or hooking your left heel over your right ankle. Stretch your arms up over your head and then let your right arm pull your left arm to the right. So soul tenacity is a phrase that Caroline Mace uses. And she talks about how this is part of our self-esteem, even our confidence. And it's this kind of unshakable way of being yourself that allows us to integrate experiences we've had, even if they're a miracle. So she talks about how if we don't have this trust for ourselves, we could witness a divine miracle and then not trust ourselves to trust what we've experienced and let it go by. But when we have this soul tenacity, when we have this, this self-esteem and this trust in ourselves, and a miracle happens or a divine experience happens, we are then with time able to integrate it into ourselves without needing another to validate it for you beforehand. So this is like a step beyond just thinking for yourself. It is this bone deep trust that you have capacity, power, and consequence. And then straighten your banana one more time. And we're going to take a mini Shavasana, just lie for a couple breaths on your back. You might have to wiggle a little bit to find the alignment. You can even bend your knees and roll your lower back down to the ground to feel the length and strength, length and lengthening of your lower back. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. You're even welcome to close your eyes for a moment allowing already the first half of your practice to take root first a little bit more than half. With your next inhale, hugging your knees and start to roll back and forth on your spine. And you're gonna roll into a downward facing dog. And so you wanna start by building up your breath. So during our yin practice, we have a steady rhythmical breath. Sometimes people talk about a, a quiet unjayi breath. And now we want to start to rev up our breath. 
So along with the movement, our vigorous breathing, both will elevate the temperature of our body and our practice. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way and lightly hop or walk your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift your version, enjoy it. And then with your exhale, bow forward, bending your knees most likely unless you're wicked flexible, as they say in Boston. And then root down with your heels and roll up one vertebrae at a time, stretching your arms up to the sky, reach up tall, maybe even look up. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. With your eyes closed or staring at your middle fingers, with your feet together or hip distance apart, root down to the ground while you stretch up towards the sky. And let's empty our breath so we can sound three ohms. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Ah. Inhale, stretch your arms up and lift your gaze. And with your exhale, bring your hands through heart center, bending your knees, bow forward. If you, if you practice a different variation, you're welcome to. Then inhale, halfway lift, keeping your hands on the mat or the floor. And then step back to plank and exhale, lower all the way down to the ground. Inhale, lift up into low cobra. Your toenails are pushing into the yoga mat. You're working your strength of your back. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, really feel what is lifting up away from the earth. So you want to imagine like the crease where your butt and your thighs meet is reaching up, pull your lower belly in. And then with your exhale, you're really focusing on what is reaching down, the apna. So your heels are dropping. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, and then walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Root down and roll up, stretch up tall. And then exhale, samasti tihi. Inhale, stretch your arms up high. Oh, thank you. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chataranga or the ground. Inhale, upward facing dog. Imagine you're lengthening here. Exhale, downward facing dog. So when I come into downward facing dog, I like to check into the areas I like to not pay attention to. So I usually engage my belly. Notice if my tail is, if I have like a sway back, like where you're sticking your butt into the air more than your butt creases. Maybe rotating your upper inner arms away from your ears so your 
thoracic, thoracic spine kind of expands there. Take another full fueling inhale, empty your breath all the way and see how quietly you can jump to the front of your yoga mat, bending your knees as you land. Amazing. Inhale, halfway lift, fly your arms if you'd like. Exhale, release and bow down. Root down with your feet, rise up tall, stretch up. And with your exhale, samastitihi. Inhale, ukatasana. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift, prepare your flying mechanism, engage you in Uddiyana Bandha and Chaturanga with your exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot all the way forward to your right thumb and rise up, warrior one. Oh, yep, I've been practicing lots of Ashtanga. One breath and then exhale, sweet Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward to your left thumb. Rise up, warrior one. Your back heel's planting. It's quite an intense pose. And then exhale all the way down to your chataranga. Letting your ribs float above your mat. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So we're really just doing a therapeutic vinyasa here. We're just trying to like lift up our heat and our blood movement. Your gaze is going to your belly eventually. Fuel up with an inhale, empty your breath all the way while you hold your breath out, float your feet quietly in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Let your heart stretch out. Exhale, release and bow down. And then inhale, sweep your arms up. Ukatasana. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center and twist to your right. Then drop your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Try to pull your left knee back as you lift your heart up, pushing down on your lower hands. And then inhale, ukatasana. Your thighs should be feeling quite warm. And with your exhale, hands to heart center, twist to your left, and then drop down and hook your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Feel what is moving in your pose. Feel what is strong in your pose. And then inhale, ukatasana. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift, walk or float, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky this time, a little bit more familiar. And with your exhale, bring your knee forward, place your right foot down and rise up, crescent lunge. Your back heel is lifted, should feel easier in your hips. And then exhale, open up, warrior two. Inhale, sky archer. What? We haven't done this in forever. So you straighten your front leg. You actually bend your back knee. It's a totally weird pose. You take your devil horns, <laughs> your mudra. Now really... Turn your gaze up. Imagine you are shooting an arrow at the ceiling. Make it an arrow of love. Take another full inhale. And then windmill your hands, either side of your foot. Exhale, I love chataranga. Oh, yes, I do. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. A hint of a smile, perhaps. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, step your left foot all the way forward to your left thumb. Rise up, crescent lunge. Back heels lifted. And then with your exhale, open up, warrior two. It's a big power pose. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to switch your legs, so to say, you're going to bend your back knee a little bit as you straighten your front leg and you want to reach up like you have a bow and arrow taking your Slayer Mudra, leveling fiercely. And then with your next inhale, enjoy it. And with your exhale, ride your breath. Chataranga. Inhale, up dog. Bow wow. Well. Exhale, down dog. And then inhale, slide forward into plank. Step your feet together and roll to the outside edge of your right foot. And then just active in your core here, trying to stretch your arms apart, feel your shoulders coming down your back. Eventually putting your whole right foot on the ground, maybe lift up your left leg. It's okay not to be stable, to be a little wobbly, discover your stability. And then exhale, chaturanga, hardest part, inhale, plank. Oh yeah. And then let's enjoy the other side, nice. Roll to the outside edge of your left foot. So you're, the whole bottom of your left foot is working its way down to the yoga mat. Imagine you have a staff in between your hands. So really try to stretch your right arm up instead of back, maybe lifting up your right leg. Nice adjustment, a little bit more pair. Yes. And then exhale. I love Chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then shoot your legs through your hands. And come lying onto your back. Slide your heels towards your buttocks. We're often used to lying down and be like, oh, now it's sleep time. Not quite yet. <laughs> so feel the contain your fire in your body. And Inhale, lift up into bridge pose. So we're going for one grandiose back bend this morning. So either you stay in your bridge pose here, really active, reaching your knees towards your toes, your chest towards your nose. You can also, if you feel warm enough and your back is asking you to bring your hands up next to your ears and lift up into full wheel. Now either stay here in full wheel or enjoy some upside down push-ups. If you really want to just let the burn burn a little hotter. I like to do five. You can pick your favorite number, hoping it's not 17. That's really hard. And then bring your chest, chest, that's your chin to your chest. And wherever you are, start to lower your hips down. Slide your feet out to the side. Take one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly as your knees drop together. Noticing that even just this small amount of practice makes such difference in how we feel in our body how we feel about starting our day. And then bring your right knee over your left knee, hug your knees towards your chest and let your twisted knees drop to your left as your gaze goes to your right. Take a full inhale and with your exhale, just sigh it out. <sighs> this time that we spend on our mat or on a meditation cushion, or even on some days, just taking time to be alone with your thoughts. So without music or a program or even a story provides richness in our world, in our experience, in the journey of being ourselves.
and then hug your knees back to center. Unwind your legs, bringing your left knee over your right knee. Lift your knees towards your chest and then drop your knees lovingly to the right. Your gaze goes away from your knees, either up to the ceiling or to the left. You can make another full inhale and with your exhale, just sigh it out. Oh. And then roll your knees back to center and come into Shavasana, corpse pose. So palms open to receive or with your hands lying in your belly if it's uncomfortable the other way. Your eyes are closed. Even your breath relaxes.
With your next inhale, invite your awareness and breath to the edges of your body. Feel the kind of presence you bring your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes and stretch your arms with your inhale over your head, reaching your whole body log. And with your exhale, curl into a ball. You can transition by rolling onto your side if you'd like, or just roll straight up into a seated position. Allow your hands to meet at heart center. Close your eyes and remember maybe who you dedicated your class to or the theme you wanted to lift up yourself. With your eyes closed, think of who's been with you in this time in our class. Let's close with one ohm. Empty your breath first and then take a big inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say namaste. And so much love. Make some noise. Well done. Thank you. Whew.